So does having just about the right growing conditions for your plants make a difference? Well, as you might be able to see from the plants behind me, these are all tomatoes here. The ones on the right are considerably bigger than the ones on the left. So it does. And before we get into the reasons why, it was about, in fact, it was exactly a week ago. So I'm filming this on a Wednesday. It's going to come out on a Thursday. So it's a day after I filmed it, but exactly a week ago today, I did a video of me potting on these tomatoes and they were in little quarter size seed trays. Like this, this is, this is lettuce in this one, but all the tomatoes were in these little seed trays that germinated and come on lovely into the new cell tray into the yogurt pots for different reasons. And again, we'll come to that in a bit. And they've been in two very different places in the house. And again, I'll show you that in a minute about what I've done, say the different conditions that they've been in for the past week and why they look so different. But speaking of differences, I'm not, I'm not getting into compost today. These have all been done in the same compost. All of these plants are in the Melcourt Silver Grove, a little bit of perlite mixed in, a little bit of fish blood and bone mixed in, nothing else. The example I always like to give in here is this though, look at this. These are the, the Bedfordshire champions and they're absolutely romping away there. The onions, they look great. And these are the Ringsburgers. And even though they've had a liquid feed, they maybe look a bit bigger. They're growing slower than a week in the jail. They are going so, so slow. So the conditions certainly for these onions in here really do make a difference. But anyway, let's get set up over here because I'm going to pop some of these on, but the reason I'm going to show you that is I want to pop some of these out and show you the real difference between these two different plants, the different types of plants in these trays as we're moving forward with them. I've got loads of different plants here to be getting on with, but don't worry. I'm probably only going to show you four of them, four important ones that really shows you the subtle differences that are, that are in these plants and the, the things that have made them grow the way they have. Now, let's just get a good example of one here. Well, first of all, let me pull this tree up. I mean, this is a week, right? Only one week. And look at the roots already coming out the bottom of the cell tray. And I mean, that's not a small size cell tray. It's a decent size, but this variety here, the one closest to us, this is sun gold. And I think this, let's get the second one in. This is one of the, the best ones. Now, these plants, all the ones you can see here in the cell tray, have been in my, oh, they're all tangled up there, have been in my prime indoor growing space. There you go, look at that there, it's absolutely beautiful. Look at the root system on that, it's blooming marvellous. So this has been inside and I've got a cupboard in the house where I grow the chilies, the tomatoes, the cucumbers, that sort of stuff when it's too cold from the outside. I've got a special grow space set up. Now in there, on the bottom, I've got a heat mat and that heat mat is set to 20 degrees centigrade and it sits at that so it keeps all this compost in the cell tray there all nice and toasty warm so all the roots are kept lovely and warm. Above that I've got a Spider Farmer SF1000 grow light and it's adjustable you can turn the percentage of light up and down and it's really 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 good it's a brilliant light as always with all these things I'll chuck a link in the description down below. You can go and click on them, have a look, see the look on Amazon. The, admittedly, the, the heat map was pretty cheap. The grow light, I did get it given by Spider Farmer a few years ago now. It's my main grow light that I use. It's blooming brilliant. It's a little bit expensive, but as you might see, you might just get what you pay for. But we'll, we'll have a look at that. And I'm going to pot these on into this size pot here. So this pot here, this is a nine centimeter pot, I think it is. And this is pretty much about the biggest pot that I use. And actually one thing we need to talk about while we're here is a bit of a, a bit of a thing that I, I used to believe until the very nice Tamsin pointed out in my last video that the little hairs that you see on the stem of a tomato, this is, seems to be circulating out there and certainly I've listened to people and believe people have told me this. If you bury those little hairs deep in the compost, all those little hairs will turn into roots. They will not. They do not turn into roots. Now there is a special name for the hairs, but I don't remember what they are called. And I'm just getting a label here just before I forget. I'm just going to pop a label in this plant so you remember what it is. So all those little hairs are actually there and it's a mechanism in the tomato plant 
to detect what the conditions, what the climate is like around and about them. And all these little hairs up and down here will detect if there's rain, will detect if it's warm, if it's cold, and the plant will respond accordingly. So burying all those little hairs nice and deep in the compost doesn't make the blindest bit of difference. And in fact, if the little hairs are designed to detect environmental conditions, I would almost argue it's more sensible to have them above the level of the compost than buried deep in the compost. Anyway, that is one sun gold plant. It looks, it's a little bit droopy, it needs water. Whenever you pot things on, they always look a little bit sad to begin with, so it'll look a little bit droopy, but we'll pop it over there. I've got enough room so it's not in the, in the shot there, but we'll just move these ones out the way. So at the same time, last week when I was potting these on, and that's my, my main crop there inside, inside that cell tray that you can see. But what I did at the same time is any sort of extra tomato plants that I had, I potted on into these, into these little yogurt pots. And the reason they're in little yogurt pots is because we've got a, an event coming up with a, a local sort of charity that I'm involved in where we, where we give plants away. And this is, this is what these are for, these spare ones are for that. But just look at the difference in, in that and in that. Now the main difference here is, let me show you up here, look at the... Look at the size difference in that, what a difference. I can't even get that in shot, see if I can get it all in the shot. And these ones here haven't been in quite the same conditions as the other one. So the ones in the yogurt pots have been in the back of my office at home. Now, it's not cold in there, it's warm. It's just the sort of ambient temperature in the house, but they haven't been on a heat mat. So the heat's probably varied. You know, overnight when it gets a bit cooler in the house, when we're all sort of tucked up in bed, it's probably, you know, probably drops down, not really cold, but it gets a bit colder. And during the day, you know, the heat and set, it maybe only gets to about 20 degrees at most in the house. Just don't want to spend too much money on the heating. Um, so they're in that sort of condition and they've had the old, have you seen the, the LED grow lights? The sort of, the ones that come on the sticks, you get sort of four purpley blue looking sticks that come over there again they're, they're quite cheap to pick up on amazon they're maybe about 20 30 pound for a, an okay set of them but it just shows look at the difference in that between having them in that in that grow cupboard that i've got where i can control the conditions really well in terms of the temperature set to 20 degrees c and with this just the ambient temperature of the house the other one again underneath the spider farmer sf1000 light when i can adjust the light to exactly what it needs to be for the distance away from the crop and again with this one it just it just looks a little bit a little bit small but it's all in the important thing is it's all in the same compost there's been no difference whatsoever in terms of the compost it all came from the same batch just like this i'm just taking the compost out of the big sort of green tray here we've got here this is melcote silver grow again with perlite a little bit of blood fish and bone mixed in nothing else other than that and i'm not going to pot this one on just now because it's still this has still got a bit of growing to do in this tiny little pot but it's not quite as straightforward as that and let me come to that just now now obviously i've got quite a lot of different varieties of tomato here and let me get the tray back out and this is where it becomes a little bit interesting now in the last video i mentioned that Brad's Atomic Grape, they're a bit spindly, they're a bit small, and they are in here. And also, the Tim's Taste of Paradise are looking a bit small as well. And I'm really keen for the Tim's Taste of Paradise to do well. And let me just, let me just bring these back up here and show you. Now, in, in this, look, let me just clear the space. This is the Brad's Atomic Grape here. They are small, they are straggly, they are weedy, they, they look half dead. And I think the reason for that is, when these have been in the grow cupboard, obviously the grow light sits above them. And these big ones here, these ones here are Alice's Dream, and the ones to the other side are Brandywine Pink. So they're big, chunky tomato plants that have grown. And I think they've grown, and together like that, they've shaded out the Brad's Atomic Grape. And the same happened over here with the San Marzano, which again, big, chunky tomatoes next to the Brandywine again have been across and they've shaded out the Tim's Taste of Paradise. Now here's where it gets interesting. Let me just pop that down and we will come over here to the yogurt pot ones. And let me just give you 
a couple of examples and I can find them. I've got loads, loads of different ones. Not that one. It's always that it's always the last one you pick up, isn't it? It's always the last place you look. So this is my Brad's Atomic Grape here. And this is him as Taste of Paradise. And they're really, really quite different. We'll pop a couple out here. And we'll just pick this one. Oh crikey, that the compost I, I watered them. And because they're so in fact, that the compost is going to break up. We'll try and keep that in one bit. Let me just lay it down gently there. And we'll try and get the Brad's Atomic Grape as well. That's come out better. Nope, that's going to that's gonna fall apart as well. There we go. Let me just put that there. And even, even that, even when they're falling apart there, when I'm taking them out, just shows you the difference in them when they're doing that. So, here is the Tim's Taste of Paradise. And I mean, look at that. Compared to... We get this one, this one here, compared to this here. And I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna put this in a pot. So we'll, we'll get one of these pots, and we're just gonna. I mean, this pot probably is a little bit on the big side for this little <laughs> tiny, even even doing it here. What a sad, a sad looking little plant it is. Honestly, I really, I really hope they, they pick up once, I, once I get these in different different conditions they'll pick up so we'll just let me just remember to get a a wee label there so that's the tim's taste of paradise going in and this year we'll pop the brad's atomic grape in and once they're all in similar sort of sort of pots we'll have a a clearer look at them side by side although i'm not gonna i'm not gonna pop those on just yet out of the um out of the yogurt pots because i don't quite think they're ready yet, but what I am gonna do, and this is, this is a little bit, it's just a little bit cheeky on my part, isn't it? In fact, I'll tell you what, now I've got those potted on, let me swap the camera around and I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. So let's just have a little recap about what we've been doing. So these are the two sun gold, there we go, sort of side by side. So there's really quite a considerable difference there. When you get the right kit, when you get the right conditions, what a difference, what a difference a week makes. And I mean, that's a week's growth compared to that just being under some pretty averagey sort of beginner level kit, we'll call it. We'll call the larger one, we'll call that intermediate growing, and we'll call the white one the beginner growing. I'm not going anywhere near experts. Like I say, this is very unscientific, very amateur. And let me grab some of the other ones here for a bit of comparison now. This one here, Brad's Atomic Grape. This one here, Brad's Atomic Grape. What a difference again because this has been sort of shaded out in the light and not been given what it needs, the conditions it needs, even though it's been on that heat mat, it's been in the cell tray. What a difference just having a bit of space makes to them. So I think even though these were going to be for the plant giveaway thing, and these are mine, I think you can probably see where this is going. I think this one's now mine. And if this one does grow, then this one might be for the plant giveaway. I think that's how it's going to go. And last but not least, very similar to the to the Tim's to the Brad's Atomic Grape. Even this is the Tim's Taste of Paradise. These are the ones that were in the cell trays in the perfect conditions. However, shaded out by much bigger plants. This one here is grown okay. Maybe it's not as big as we'd hoped it would have got to. Hasn't been in the perfect conditions. Had the the sort of cheaper beginner set of lights, but it's looking like a much healthier plant than that. And as for the other ones, I think this is now my plant and this might be somebody else's. So what am, I, what am I taking away? I always like to learn things in this. So what am I taking away from this particular thing that I wanted to talk about today, these growing conditions? One is heat is very important. Two is light is very important. And three is my spacing needs to be so much better next year. Thinking about it now, those little, I knew before I, before I planted those on into that cell tray, that those Brad's Atomic Grape are spindly little tomatoes. So I think next year, when we do the tomatoes, the Brad's Atomic Grape, instead of going into a cell, might go into, and if I can find it, I think they're down here, one of these little individual pots and just give them their own space and their own light. And hopefully that'll bring them a lot quicker. The same with the Tim's Taste of Paradise, exactly the same. We'll do that sort of thing. Anyway, that's me done for today. Thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.